Today, uh, there are two major topics I want to talk about. Uh, the rank of a matrix and uh, homogeneous equation systems. Let's talk about the rank of a matrix first. And um, if you want to talk about the rank of matrix A, you could use this notation, R parentheses A. And this is simply read the rank, rank of matrix A. The rank of matrix A is uh, the maximum number of linearly independent rows. The maximum number of linearly independent rows in matrix A. If A is an M by N matrix, then the rank of A uh, must be uh, less than or equal to M or N, whichever is smaller. Okay. So the rank of matrix A is uh, less than or equal to the minimum value of M or N. For example, uh, suppose A is a 3 by 2. Then the rank of matrix A can be at most what? 2. Whatever the smaller number is. Um, so the rank of matrix A could be at most 2. It could be less than 2, but yeah. At most, it could be two. Okay. Um, suppose A is, say, a three by three. And suppose um, you find the determinant of A is not zero then what is the rank of A? It has to be 3. Because if the, the determinant is not 0, that means the rows, the three rows, are linearly independent. So it would mean the rank of A would be 3. Okay. But if you find the determinant is 0, then you know the rank of A is less than Less than three. It could be two, it could be one, but it has to be less than three. Okay. Let me show you how to uh, find uh, the rank of a matrix. And uh, let's take a three by three matrix to illustrate. Let's take this matrix right here. This is the middle row, one, two, three, uh, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. And suppose you want to find the rank of this matrix. Now you use a method called the echelon method. And this method, um, your goal is to get this element to become a number one. And then you clear out beneath it. So what you're, you're going to do manipulations to make this a one, make this a zero, make that a zero. Then you start on row two, and then you want to make this a one, clear out above it and below it. And um, if you find that all these rows are non-zero rows after you use this echelon method, then the rank of the matrix would be 3. However, if you find one of these rows, the bottom row, becomes all zeros, then uh, the rank would be 2. If the bottom two rows become all zeros, then the rank would be 1. Okay. 
Now, in this echelon method, there are three basic operations. The first operation is you can interchange any two rows. The second operation you can perform is you can multiply any row by a scalar k, by a non-zero scalar k. Where that k is assumed to be non-zero. Okay. Uh, and k could be anything, any scalar, other than 0. And 3, you can, uh, well, basically, this is um, repeating 1 and 2. But this is what the book does, so I'll uh, do the same thing as the book. You can, oh, actually, it is a little bit different. You can add any two rows. Actually, what the book says is you can multiply any row by k and then add it to another row. But that's just repeating number two. Okay, so these are really the three uh, operations you can perform. Now, you want to use, let me check on something. I'm, not, I'm feeling uncomfortable with the way I spelled echelon. Did I misspell that? Oh, there's no S, sorry. It's, yes, this is a C, E-C, there we go, there we go, there's no S, it's just E-C-H-E-L-O-N, okay, I would never win a spelling bee, okay. Now, these are the three operations you can perform, and what you want to do as I mentioned before, you want to use these three operations to make this element a number one. Uh, so, do you have any suggestions? Okay, actually you could swap with row two because you could interchange any two rows. Uh, or alternatively, we could have done, what else could we have done to make that a number one? Multiply by one fourth. Yeah, multiply by one fourth. Uh, either way would be fine. Uh, but let's uh, take Ben's suggestion, just swap row one and row two. And this is our original matrix. We'll call A1 the new matrix after we swapped rows one and two. So A1 is this. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so we've got this to be a number one. Now the next step is to clear out beneath that number one so that this element becomes a zero and this element becomes a zero. Basically, what we're trying to do is do these three manipulations to convert this matrix into an identity. Basically, that's what we're trying to do, um, if we can. So, what do you suggest I do next? Right. Multiply the first row by 4 and then subtract it from the second. Or alternatively, multiply the first row by minus 4 and add it to the second. Same thing. Okay. Uh, so let's do that. And actually, let's do both. What would we have to do to make this element a 0?
somebody besides a Ben or a Diana. If we wanted to make this element a zero, what would we do? Yes. Right. Yes. Uh, uh, Estevan, is that right? Estevan. Am I finally getting it right? Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. So let's do both of those, and we'll call this a two. First, let's multiply this row by minus four and add it to this row. So uh, we'll leave this row unchanged. Now, this row will become zero. And we're multiplying this by a minus four and adding it to this. So we have a minus eight plus five, so minus three. We multiplied this row by minus 4, so we have a minus 12 plus 6 minus 6. Okay. Um, and now we're also going to multiply row 1 by minus 7 and add it to row 3. Uh, doing that will give us a 0 here. Uh, minus 7 times 2 is minus 14. Minus 14 plus 8 is a minus 6. Minus 7 times 3 is minus 21. Plus 9 is a minus 12. Now actually, what can you see now about rows 2 and 3? Yeah, uh, row 3 is just um, twice uh, row 2. Uh, so uh, basically, if you just multiply row 2 by uh, minus 2 and add it to this, this row all becomes zeros. Okay, and what that means is the rank of the matrix is 2. But let's just continue to follow the procedures. Suppose you didn't see that. Then we want to make this element a um, plus one. How? What kind of operation would make that a plus one? Yes, just multiply by a negative row two by a negative one third. Doing that, uh, we would get a three. One, two, three. That stays a zero. A minus one third times this gives us a one. A minus one third times this gives us a two. And then we have our zero minus six minus 12. Okay. Now what you want to do is let's just clear out below. We don't really have to clear out above. Let's just clear out below this element. So what that means is we want to make this element a zero. How are we going to do that? What kind of row operations could we perform to make that a minus six into a zero? Yeah, uh, uh, it's, I told you, thank you. Uh, yeah, just multiply row two by six, add it to row three. And when we do that, we get A4, and A4 is this. One, two, three, zero, one, two. Multiply this row by six. See, six times zero plus zero is still zero. Now we get six plus minus six is a zero. Twelve minus twelve, we get a zero. Okay. Now, the fact that this bottom row is all zeros means that the rank of this uh, matrix is 2. Okay. Uh, the rank will be the number of non-zero rows in the matrix. And this matrix only has uh, two non-zero rows. So therefore, the rank of matrix A is equal to 2. 
that's the maximum number of uh, linearly independent rows in the matrix. Okay, so that's how uh, to determine the rank of a matrix. Uh, had this last row not been all zeros, then the rank of the matrix would have been three. But in this case, uh, that last row was all zero, so the rank is uh, two. Had we found that both of these rows were all zeros, then the rank would have been one. Okay, so uh, now any questions over that, how to find uh, the rank of a matrix? Uh, you just uh, perform this echelon method uh, and find uh, the maximum number of non-zero rows that gives you the rank.